Hanifa was not only a knowledgeable person who knew how to explain things and knew how to clarify things, he also knew how to get himself out of situations, but he was also a man, definitely, first and foremost, of great, great faith. He asked his student, how was your teacher Abu Hanifa in character? And this is how he described it. He said, he was extremely pious. He avoided forbidden things all the time. But he remained silent and absorbed in his thoughts most of the time. So he didn't speak much unless he had to. He answered questions only if he knew the answer to them. He was very generous and self-respected. He never asked a favor from anybody in his life. He shunned the company of the worldly-minded people. So he didn't like sitting around people who talked about money and houses and property. And people who held worldly power, he didn't like sitting with them. And he didn't like having a position or status. He avoided gossip and slander. And he only talked good things about people, even if there was bad to talk about them, even against his enemy. He only spoke well or he, or he was silent. Not like us today. If we hate someone, we mention every name under the sun to them. Abu Hanifa, even his enemies who imprisoned him and whipped him, he had nothing to say but only good or he was silent. And this is Wallahi the test in his life. He had profound learning abilities, generous with his knowledge as well as his wealth. This was Abu Hanifa. Imam Abu Hanifa was endued with intelligence beyond measure. Very, very intelligent. Look at something, he was, he was full of reasoning, very rational person. Looked at things in common sense and looked at things from all perspectives. Every way, four-dimensional thought, four-dimensional. A lot of us were just one-dimensional. He was four-dimensional. I'm going to give you some examples very soon. Abu Hanifa was one full of reasoning. And the Romans sent an envoy, a man, to try and trick them, to try and put doubt about their religion. So a man came along and he said to the people, gathered people said, I have come with three questions. He stood up and he said, My first question is, Who was there before God? Before Allah, who was there? And then the second question, Right now, Allah is facing in which direction? And number three, What is Allah doing right now? Abu Hanifa was only about 10 years old or 12 years old that time. No one could answer. So he said, Let me answer, Father. So he came up and he said to him, as for who is before God, uh, we know this narration. He said, count from 10 backwards. And he counted until he reached zero. He said, what's before one? He said, zero. So what's before? He said, nothing. Don't give me this minus one minus two. That's actually a number. Zero is basically the end. And he said, what's before one? He said, nothing. He said, so the Lord of the worlds, the glorious creator, how can he not be the beginner of everything when in in actual common sense and logic, you count backwards and you end up with one and there's nothing before that. Then he asked him the second question. He says, what about God? Where is he facing? In which direction is he facing now? He said, if you light up a candle, what do you see? He said, light. He said, in which direction is the candle light facing? He said, uh, it's not facing any particular direction. Light, light is facing everywhere. Right? Facing any particular direction. He said, then what do you say about Allah who is the light of lights? Nurun ala nur. How can I say which direction he is facing? As for the third answer, he said to him, to answer your third question, you have to come down here and I go up there because the people want to hear the answer. And if you want to, you know, basically get me in your question, then at least let everybody hear my answer. It's only fair because you made your question in front of people. Let me answer in front of the people. So he thought that's common sense. So we got up and he said, what is Allah doing right now? He said, right now, He is making the one who is on falsehood come down off the pulpit and the one full of success to climb up the pulpit to answer and prove you wrong. So He said, this is what Allah is doing right now. Every action that happens in life, this is what Allah is doing. Right now, Allah is doing this. If it wasn't for God, we will all be non-existent, dead, gone. Because we don't keep ourselves alive. Allah keeps us alive. Allah keeps everything in motion. It doesn't keep itself in motion. Right? Nothing keeps itself in motion, it comes to an end. Imam Abu Hanifa was also asked about how can you prove God's existence. As a child, he said, well, if you had a ship that was sailing in, this, in the sea, 
and it had no people to steer the boat, no people were paddling, no sails, uh, no propellers, nothing. Just a piece of boat in the sea. And you wanted it to sail from one direction to the other and reach that destination. Can that ship reach its destination by itself? This, he said, no. He said, well then, how can this world and your motion and your heartbeat and your existence and motion, all of that, live and go without someone controlling it? Just like the ship cannot control itself and maneuver itself without any you know, electronics and without any satellite, without any of this, then how can you be able to move and live without someone guiding you and being a navigator and control? So Imam Abu Hanifa, just to illustrate how intelligent he was even from a very young age before he even reached, received Islamic knowledge.